Well, we're back on Fresh Waves. We are talking about Lyme disease this morning. And, you know, for a lot of the things that we've been talking about, little bugs on your body regurgitating things into you, putting anesthetics so you don't feel them, Borrelia swimming around in our systems, it's actually kind of gross. And like I said, it's kind of like a Halloween show. But it's very good information. It's true information that we need to know. It's good to understand how these things work. There's so much misinformation about Lyme disease are surrounding us right now. So many myths, so many things that people don't really understand. So it's good to let people know that there are ways of dealing with Lyme disease. It's not a hopeless cause if you've got Lyme disease. No, not at all. Not everybody who feels like they're tired and has a foggy brain has Lyme disease. I felt that way the whole time I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and there was something growing, but it wasn't Borrelia. <laughs> but I had brain fog the whole time. So there are different things. We're not saying that everybody who has flu-like symptoms has Lyme disease. All no. we're saying is be smart when you're outside. Take a look around you. Check out your kids and yourself and Very make sure that so, you, yeah. you haven't brought any little ticks back in with you. And have a a big mirror in your house to see your backside as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't have a partner who does it, who yes. does it for you. <laughs> because the backside is just as vulnerable to a tick as the front oh, side. Yes. Oh, Actually, yes. more so because you can't see it. <laughs> yeah, the back of your knees are very much affected. Yeah. Very often. Okay. So there are some preventative medicines. We've kind of talked about the the black cumin, cumin oil. There are pesticides that people say, but I personally don't want to cover myself in DEET or some yeah, other no. pesticide when I go out walking. I think the cancer risks and all the other side effects of those chemicals are... And it's only are... lasting four to six hours, no longer, anyway. Oh. So it's, that is proved that this all, even DEET is not having more effect for more than six hours. Really? Yeah. And, you know, if you're bored, you can take the paint off of your car with it. <laughs> 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 Try spraying some off on your car someday. It's amazing what it does to the paint job. Anyway, so you, I guess a, a good precaution would be trying to wear clothing when you're out in the forest walking around just because it gives you an extra layer. Yeah, but it's not a safe safe thing, so it can always go underneath. They crawl inside, don't they? They crawl inside and they crawl along your legs up to the groin and up to the navel and even higher up, so in the armpits. So this is not a, a safe method. And it's not a safe method to have uh, light clothes because I always say if you wear light clothes, you see them. Okay, they are dark. You might see them, but they are so small. You have to be They're very so careful. Small. Like we're talking something the size of a sesame seed. Yeah. And an adult is what the size of a black yeah. fly kind of thing. Yeah, very small. They're still small. They're really small. Anyway, if people want to find more information out, if they've been... Uh, intrigued or curious by our show um, where can they go to get information here in Canada well you have different websites which are mostly um, entertained by patients which are affected so they want to give out information so you have uh, Lyme Ontario if I'm not mistaken yeah. Lyme Ontario is a good one yep. yeah that's a good one it's a good information and you have You can go on my website. I have some English articles on my website, drhopfseidel.de, www.drhopfseidel.de, with hyphen in between. It's in Dr. and Hopf and the Seidel. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. hyphen, Hoff hyphen Seidel. Right. It's a little bit complicated. Um, and you have uh, English groups, which are very good in, in England. They have uh, the same problem, of course, and... So they have um, the Lyme Action Group, for example, in England. Or the Canadian Lyme Disease Foundation is Can, Can Lyme. Can Lyme, Can yep. Lyme Com. Oh, there are many. And if you go on my website, you, you see them under links. Mm -hmm. I have listed a lot of uh, websites on under links. And you have books around, which are very informative, like the book of uh, Fairy Hel Helke Ferry. Helke Hel Ferry is a Canadian... Um, um, writer, writer. And, and journalist and she is very much in the subject of um, knowing about Lyme disease a lot and mm -hmm. she wrote or she compiled the book Ending Denial which was um, last published 2013, mm -hmm. second, edi second edition and this is really a book which 
depicts all the aspects of Lyme disease in Canada. The denial, the negligence uh, around Lyme disease, and the, and the research which has done. So there are many, many articles of people who were affected by Lyme disease, likewise research results mm -hmm. from local researchers, like Mr. Scott is one of them. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And I've learned a lot of it from the Canadian situation. And you have a wonderful um, blog going on. So there are lots of websites that people can go to. There are yes. books with Helga Ferry. There's, um, if you just kind of Google around, but make sure that you are reading from credible sources. Like Horowitz is another source. Yes. He has been, written two books about Lyme disease. Oh, and he also is the, the, um, the man who wrote the song right. that we heard <laughs> at the beginning of the show, The Ballad of a Deer Tick. And we'll hear that again at the end of the show because it's kind of a, a fun song to um, to... Talk about Lyme disease and, and not talk about it in such a scary way that it scares people yeah. to ever go outside. Because we're not saying that at all. I'd like to stress that. We're not saying don't go outside. We're not saying don't go in the forest. No. I Only be wise. I live in the forest. I love the forest. It's my salvation. So yeah. I, I need to be in the forest. And there's so many good things about being outside and going for a walk and the health and the... These are the things that boost your immune system and keep you healthy right. and enjoying life. Mm -hmm. But you have to just be aware. Yeah, just be wise. <laughs> be wise. Yeah, that's all you need. You need to have the information how to behave and, and then how to be uh, aware and about yeah. everything around Lyme disease. Right, to be aware of it. Yeah. To look for those little black specks mm -hmm. that might move. <laughs> <laughs> or might not, as the not case anymore, may be. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if they're, they're attached, they're they kind don't of move anymore. stuck they and they don't suck. go anywhere. Oh, that's awful. And so um, I know people who have been searching for testing and a doctor to take them through the process. I'm sure there are some in Ontario. In my experience, not many, if any. But Dr. Horowitz is in New York. Yeah. New York's not that far. It's a, yeah, but it's a, he's really <laughs> filled with patients. I'm sure His he is. His office is really overflowing. And he yeah. travels around the world too, talking yeah, he about it. Yeah, a lot of lectures everywhere in the world, in Europe. Mm -hmm. He studied in Belgium, so he's fluent in French. So he's in the... I have met him personally several times, so he's really all around. Now, is there, through him and his practice, is there, is there research being done into Lyme disease or is it more patient studies and just... Yeah, research, you can't do research on your own. I mean, if you are a practitioner, practitioner, how should you do any research? But he has a lot of patients which he uh, statistically um, described and, and he has found out a lot of new things too, how to treat and how you can be safer and... and more sure that it's really Lyme disease what you are treating. And we we are not talking about all the co-infections now, which are still another plague. If you are co-infected with, with a tick bite by, Borel, by Bartonella, by Ehrlichia, by Anaplasma, by so many other little... So ticks carry more than just oh, Borrelia? Yes. Oh, yes, they can. They, not necessarily, but they can really carry a lot of different other germs which are transmitted the same way. So they, it, along with the cocktail of Borrelia, they can actually vomit even more oh, yes. wonderful, oh, great yes. other bacteria yeah, into your system. Think of tick-borne encephalitis, for example, or Bovasan virus. They are all transmitted by ticks. Isn't that the pig virus? The Bovasan one? Which one? The pig? I, the pig virus there's that swine pig? flu no no, no, no that's no, different no, it's that's for different humans. it's affecting humans yeah mm -hmm. so they give you other diseases the co but they're not as prevalent as oh yes they the are they are not so easy to recognize like borrelia but they are still very much well it doesn't sound like borrelia is that easy to detect when well, all these but in tests comparison bartonella is even worse oh really oh yeah it's much more difficult because the antibodies are not so clear so, so what's Bartonella then? It's a, it's a different kind of bacteria. Is it a spir no, it's spirochete? Not. No, it's not a spirochete, but it's intracellular as well. So it lives into, in the cells. And does it make you sick? Oh, very much so. Very much so. It's, it's really a, a real nasty bug. 
And there is another doctor, Dr. Buna, who specializes in treating Bartonella, and he knows a lot about it. And there are some doctors specializing in Bartonella. So you have to look around. Doctor, Mr. Google makes it possible yeah. <laughs> to find out about it. So what are what would be the difference in between the Borrelia and the Bartonella? Bartonella has even more headaches and more pain of of uh, a, uh, aching of of joints and muscles than Borrelia, even worse. And and cognitive problems are even worse. So and if they are combined present, it's terrible. So people can't work anymore. Really? Yeah. And if they fight through it, I mean, I heard the one woman that I spoke to when I was preparing for this show, um, and she was she was talking about the fact that her sister knew she had Lyme disease, had been bitten many times by ticks, and had always worked through it, mm-hmm. always worked through it, always worked through it. And she'd worked to the point where she honestly couldn't work anymore. She'd mm-hmm. just run herself down. And then she'd be sick, but not for a day, for months before she could get back up again. Yeah. That's so like, true. That's true. So yeah. many, many are not able to work anymore. They fall through the social net. Yeah. And they are... I, I and people just think they're a little crazy. Yeah, yesterday I met a man. Uh, he told me he is treated now for 10 months and still cannot work. And he has no income. He has no no um, security in any ways anymore. So he's really living on the low end of, of the total. Yeah. yeah. And and he's has Lyme disease? Has yeah, he been yeah, diagnosed yeah. for sure? Yeah, for sure. Wow. He's diagnosed with hygienics. Ah. So he went the way to California. To California, mm-hmm. got the blood test done, mm-hmm. and he's living here in Canada. Yeah. And is there any help for him here, or just... Oh, he got antibiotics, but to my opinion, not the right ones, because after 10 months, he should be much better now. Yeah. He didn't get the minocycline he didn't know about. Okay. So, maybe. So, he, now, maybe if he... new information, yeah. now he's able to get better, I think. Wow. And I guess it's diligence on his part, just keeping on finding out and and, yeah. and keep researching. Yeah, he and came to the lecture and, and was very much interested what news to, to get to know news about the disease. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a big, I think that's a responsibility, unfortunately, of the patient. You have to drive your own bus through this illness. Yeah. It's not that there's You're already, <laughs> yes, there's no guidelines, mm-hmm. there's no protocol already in place. It's it's very... There are protocols in place, but they are not the right ones. Right. The, the guidelines are really misleading. As I said, Twenty. One day to the most, it's not the right way to treat Lyme disease. No. So with the misinformation, yeah. both on the professional end and on the layperson's end, because there will always be what I call the, the snake oil salesman, you know, that person who will try to, try to sell you something that really is just hocus pocus mm-hmm. and it's not going to work. So you need the science. And sometimes with diseases like this, where there's not enough research, we don't have the science. We have some basic things, but there seems to be a lot more to this than just the basics. That's true. There's a lot, a lot more research necess- necessar- necessary than it is done. Yeah. And it's not paid for. I mean, the universities are not interested. And who should make the research? The pharmaceutical industry is not interested, so there's not much left. <laughs> and when the pharmaceutical industry isn't interested because patents have run out on drugs and things, mm-hmm. then the money's not there. Yeah. And when the money's not there, the research basically comes to a grinding halt. There could be, theoretically, from what we've been talking about, there could be millions and millions of people who actually have Lyme disease. Sure. And don't even know it. Or they know and are not treated. What's right. What is even worse. Mm-hmm. Because if you know that your health could be better and you don't get help by your system of your country, of the health system of your country, it's terrible. Well, they are really angry. Most people I, I met are angry about the medical system, which prevents them from, from being treated. Or doesn't give them all the help that they need. I know mm-hmm. that something was looked at last year. I should have done a bit of research on that before the show, but I know that Jane Philpott, when she was Minister of Health, was looking into some new guidelines, mm-hmm. but I don't think they went far enough. They fell very short of what they should be mm-hmm. in terms of yeah. new guidelines they, they for Lyme disease. They changed much in comparison to the American guidelines, which are the wrong ones. 
<laughs> it's a guidelines are not bringing you to any any good end. <laughs> right. With the it's a it's a guidelines you really can't treat someone. Right. Because they say ten days is enough or twenty days is enough and no more. And it's not. It's not. No. And in Germany, have they come forward? The, yeah, it, the organization I'm belonging to, the German Borreliosis Society, they had their own guidelines. They are trans translated to English as well. So if you attract, uh, come to my website, it's on my website, you can see them. We have these new drugs and everything is on this guideline in incorporated. But it's not officially acknowledged, of course, because... Uh, Medical society acknowledges only the one which are coming from the U.S. So, and these are the ITSA guidelines. But ILETS is the other uh, organization in the U.S. They have the right thing. They have the right view of, of the disease and the, the right information, but they are not acknowledged either. So, That's too bad. Yeah. The so official guidelines are the ITSA guidelines. And okay. they are the short. They are much too short to be able to treat to health. Okay, so if if um, if someone wants this information, they can go to your website. They can go to your website. You also have a little booklet that you publish that someone can buy that gives them a little bit of a an overview of Lyme disease, mm -hmm. about the tick itself. There's good pictures there. And, you know, it's nice to have the book in your hand. <laughs> But there are some good things on the Internet. You just got to be really careful that the information that you're getting is credible. And that there's some science to back it up. Sure. That's always necessary. Yeah. I mean, there may be an herb out there that is great for Lyme disease. But so there's far, some. we don't have really good science to back that up. Well, for some herbs, we have it. For Samenda, for example, Kumanda, Banderol. These are herbs from a tree of South America. Oh. The bark of it is used. And this is really helpful. So, but it's not not alone. I'm always against this alone herbal or right. only herbal. You you can combine herbal things with with real antibi antibiotics. Then it works. Then it works. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or you have it after the antibiotic treatment. You just continue with the herbal treatment. That is okay, but yeah. not alone. Not alone. No. And it should be guided by a physician who knows sure. something about this. It's That's why I'm saying, you know, Dr. Horowitz is. Um, probably a good source and I'm sure that being so close because New York really isn't that far away he probably does have links to networks here in Canada where I'm not informed about it neither am I but I'm just saying he mm -hmm. probably might <laughs> it's <laughs> a might. good place to start anyway yeah. <laughs> start to look anyway thank you so much for joining us today Dr. Hofseidel I know that you're um, here on vacation and I don't want to take up all of your vacation time because we could talk about this for another couple of hours <laughs> there's true. there's a lot to be said so if uh, people want to go to your website we'll put that on our Facebook page and they can just hop by your website and see what you have to say about these bugs that crawl and don't fly and vomit into our mm. systems and I'll put the lecture of yesterday on my website so that can be Uh, go through that as well. Okay, that sounds great because there was a you did a talk in Aurora yesterday mm -hmm. to um, some really interested holistic nutritionists and uh, people who were interested in Lyme disease, and it was it was a fascinating talk. So thanks again for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to have you on Fresh Waves, and we hope that uh, through this information we can help people at least get some more yeah. information. Thank you, Brenda, for the opportunity to talk about it because this is the most important part to spread the, the information. Spread the news. And the yeah, news. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. We've had a great show today. Thanks for tuning in. Jason, thanks for all your help behind the board. Always a pleasure to have you on board. Ivan Harris, thank you for producing today. You've been listening to Fresh Waves, a Whistle FM production. Have a great day, everyone. Clyde came to my office one bright sunny day. He said, Doc, come in an awful bad way. See, 19 docs and I'm almost dead. All they can tell me is it's in my head. Doctor, please help me, please. 
I said, Clyde, can you tell me what you did in life That caused you all this terrible strife Said, Doc, I was with my beautiful wife The woods one day enjoying life Lay down on the ground and we fooled around Before you knew it, I was illness bound From that day on, what I've been going downhill Can you give me a lotion or a potion or a magic pill? Doctor, please help me, please. Gonna pick off the tick real quick before the devil gets within. Grab all the lime to steal my mind. I sure could use it for a little more time. It hurts over here, it hurts over there, it hurts in places everywhere. It hurts in my fingers and it hurts in my toes. It hurts in places where nobody goes. I said, Clyde, this is your lucky day. I know why you're feeling in such a bad way. The night in the shower, did you check to see? If there's anything attached to the back of your knee, or anywhere else, or anywhere else. I think you know what I mean. Did you notice a mite or a bite or a tick or a ring or any such unusual thing? Did you shake or quake, get hot or cold before your illness really took hold? And looked at me with a tear in his eye and let out one enormous sigh. Said, Doc, I remember some unusual rash on my nose and my toes and where nobody goes. I'm gonna pick off the tick real quick before the devil gets within. Crime for the line to steal my mind. Sure could use it for a little more time. It hurts over here, it hurts over there, it hurts in places everywhere. It hurts in my fingers and it hurts in my toes. It hurts in places where nobody goes. I said, Clyde, this is not chronic fatigue. Fibromyalgia, systemic lupus, trigeminal neuralgia, halitosis, multiple sclerosis, or any hocus pocus diagnosis. It's about time you got tested for Lyme. It'll be wiser to check your ELISA. It'll be easier to treat your babesia once we show your HMO. Just pray it's positive. You'll be lucky indeed. Gonna pick off the tick real quick before the devil gets within. Rhyme for a line to steal my mind. Sure could use it for a little more time. It hurts over here, it hurts over there. It hurts in places everywhere. It hurts in my fingers and it hurts in my toes. It hurts in places where nobody goes. Nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows, nobody knows. You've been listening to Fresh Waves, a Whistle FM production. I'm your host, Brenda Masson, and our technical producer is Jason Rumball. Tune in every Wednesday at 10 a.m. for... Fresh Waves here on Whistle FM, 102.9 on the FM dial and whistlefm.com anywhere in the world. Fresh Waves is available on podcast too. Just go to whistlefm.ca or freshwaves.ca. We podcast all of the Fresh Waves shows so that you can listen at your leisure. Fresh Waves, it really is 